This conference will now be recorded. Hi, uh, Ramesh here. Good morning. Are you able to hear me? Good morning, Ramesh. Yes. Hi. Hi, uh, give me a minute. I, my cousin says it's not working. Uh, I'm just resetting it. Just bear, bear me for five minutes.
Hi, uh, Ramesh here. Uh, are you able to see my screen now? Yes, now I can see it. Okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, let's continue today. Uh, today we start with the other type of integration called core connectors. So we see how we can uh, we create a core connector type of integration. So in which case we used to go for core connectors compared to EAB. Compared to EAB, or in the scenarios we mostly go for the connectors. And uh, difference between EAB and connectors when uh, creating the integrations and how the two work actually. So, we talk, we talk about core connectors first. So this core connectors is nothing but is a predefined templates uh, given by Workday. So we have different types of templates. Uh, in EAB, we see different types of web services provided by Workday. So using those web services and uh, custom reports, we were able to build our integrations and uh, <laughs> create integrations and uh, deliver the files to the downstream system. Here also, with the core connectors, it's a, not a web service, it's a template system, okay? So for each, uh, many of the uh, functionalities and the many of the vendors, they have provided a built-in templates. So by using them, by using those templates, we will be creating our integrations here. Okay. Let's see uh, different types of core connector templates available are uh, provided by what they get. Okay. So we see that the templates uh, when you are creating the integration system. So I'm just now uh, typing the task name for creating integration system. Okay. The task name to create core connectors integration is create integration system. So when you want to create an EAB, that is create EAB. But if you want to create a uh, core connector or a document type of uh, uh, integration, that is going to be a create integration system here. So the task name is create integration system. And uh, if you click on it, it will give some uh, names here. This is the integration system name. Okay. We can give anything like let's say I'm giving RD16. Uh, Core connector worker. Okay. So comment section we can provide what any comment like what is this integration is designed for and which purpose and who is the vendor. So we provide some explanation about in the comment section, but it is not a mandatory. Like, so wherever you see the start button, that is going to be mandatory section. You need to be it here. So similarly, document tags as well. So there are different types of tags here. Okay. Financial, HCM, payroll. So which this integration, uh, which uh, module it belongs to. Okay. So if it is belong to HCM module, we can select a HCM. If it is belong to financial module, you can, you can select choose a financial here. It's a payroll, you can choose a payroll. Or a custom, you can choose it is tax here. So this is because to filter out data or filter out integration based on the module here. Okay. Suppose you want to see all the list of integrations which are belong to HCM module or which are belong to payroll module. So when you are searching it, when you it is easy to identify that based on this tax here. If with this integration tag is belong to HCM, that means when I am searching all integrations with this tag, HCM tags, so this will be this integration will be listed there. Okay, we can easily find out our integration name based on this tag. So this is again it's optional, it's not mandatory. If you want to choose it again. The next one is template. Template is the one where we need to choose here for core connector worker. Core connector here. Okay. Workday has provided um, many different templates here based on the functional area, functional area module. So let's see, we can choose it by based on the category here. And by I'm choosing by category. 
there are different types of categories available. One is, let's say, one is go Cloud Connect for benefits, Cloud Connect for financials. This is for finance FSEM module. Cloud Connect for FSEM payroll. Uh, similarly, spend management, student, student admissions. So there are different types of kind of functional areas or modules available here. Okay, uh, it is a third-party payroll like uh, uh, mostly uh, ADP. Okay, if so, if um, payroll is processed by ADP or some other company, we create integrations for ADP using this template here. Uh, third-party payrolls. Okay, and. Uh, integrations so these are categorized into multiple uh, functional areas here okay so each functional area let's see i'm going to benefits here under benefits there are a lot of templates available under benefits module these templates are many of them are specific to vendors here if you see adp Polar. ADP is the vendor name. It's a company name here. Who can process Cobra uh, rights and some of the benefits here? So this is the ADP Cobra integration. ADP Cobra integration. Similarly, we have ADP FSA commu commuter integration. So Advantica is the vendor who will provide dental and vision. Uh, benefits to employees. If any customer having a business with Advantica, Advantica is the vendor name or company name, and they can directly use this template. Okay, so it's not. It's just for a few for five minutes or ten minutes or uh, mostly uh, with less. Uh, there is no coding at all. Okay, in this template there is no coding at all. Just a configuration. We do that configuration, build integration. We can uh, run the integration for Advantica. So this is a end-to-end -end integration. Or when I initially uh, given the first class, where I mentioned that there is connectors are two types. One is end-to-end -end connectors, end-to-end -end, uh, integration, end-to-end -end integration, and the other type is uh, core connectors. Okay. So this is Advantica Dental is like of end-to-end -end integration. Build our end-to-end uh, -end integrations are completely delivered integrations by Okay, so as a developer we don't need a no need to spend much efforts when you are creating integrations with these templates ADP FSA just a configuration we don't need any coding in these templates here okay so we do configure like I'll tell you how to configure one uh, similar to code factor worker here so we do, uh, we have to configure the services here. We need to readily use it. So we don't need any transformation. We don't need XSLT. So what work they will do is they will tie up with these companies here. Like Aitna is one of the vendors, Advantica, ADP. If you see lot many vendors here, uh, Antium, Blue Class, and Blue Sheet. This is one of the company who provide life and disability benefits to employees. Okay. Uh, Antium Blue Cross and Blue Team, these are the company names. Uh, ASF Flex is one of the company. Asurant is one of the company here. Our vendor who provides benefits, different types of benefits. Okay. <clears throat> Benefit Express is one of the company here. Benefit Focus, these are the top companies or most vendors in USA or uh, some other countries where they provide different uh, varieties of benefits to the employees. Uh, let's see, Blue Cross, Blue Cross and Blue Shield here, and similarly, we'll see a lot of vendor names. So, you these are the vendor names or company names here Care Mark, okay, CDEX, Capital Health Plan. Uh, everything, if you see the colon before the colon, that is going to be a company name here Signa Star Bridge, Cobra uh, Point. So, these are these are another vendor here. So these templates are specific to vendors. Okay. If any customer having a business with these vendors, they can directly use. Let's say uh, my my customer having a business with Dean Care. Dean Care is the vendor name 
our uh, company name who will provide medical benefits to employees okay. our customer is business having type with this company to provide benefits to their employees okay they need an integration uh, okay to transform or to send employee data to this this company okay so in that case what do we do we choose we create an integration using this template dean care template this is the vendor name so we can just configure the integration and uh, choose different services or different fields there to send you to whomever we send we can choose it and we can build the integration here the file name the file format uh, if it's an xml file or if it's a csv file uh, something like other formats so what they will take care of this so choosing for which file con uh, naming conversion that this company will use so what type of file it's a direct file it's a text file or it's a csv file so they will work they will work with these type of vendors okay so they will provide uh, integrations for them readily we can readily use this okay so we don't even need a business requirements document or we don't need any mostly or very less communication or uh, uh, frequent com we don't need any frequent communications to these vendors especially to build the integrations okay what they will take care of if uh, of this type and they will provide a built-in integration for, for us a built-in uh, template for us we choose this template and create the integrations let's say if there are any change in uh, any file format any change in uh, this file uh, any company any of these companies so they will intimate to what they okay what they will provide a fix for that or uh, in the next uh, a patch for okay, the next update or okay, so they will provide it please and uh, it, it will be delivered to all vendors okay all customers automatically so we don't need any change but, uh, you know, there is a change in these many vendors okay. um, there are a lot of vendors they do um, here okay and i was if you go down fidelity is one of the vendor uh, i made is one of the vendor so and flex compensation is one of the vendor here so if you go down like you can see hartford hartford is one of the main vendor uh, for medical and to medical benefits to provide so these are the main top vendors uh, available in us or some other countries who can provide benefits to uh, companies okay benefits different varieties of benefits so our customers who are having having these many companies uh, business having these companies to to process their benefits for their employees they can use of any of this uh, depends on the company they tie up with they use that uh, template and they build the integration so the field names the field format uh, whether it's up, uh, upper case lower case field size so these these requirements are already fulfilled by uh, workday okay workday so how what workday will do they directly inter interact with these companies okay they will provide the integration for this template for this. if there is any change in the template uh, workday will change it and give that to so in the next pass or something so we don't need to choose any type of uh, coding or uh, needed here in, in many cases this is all end-to-end -end integrations so so we need to choose like let's see for based on the module wise we need to choose it like if uh, i want to create create a benefits integration i can choose the benefit model and find the list of integrations there based on the vendor okay and choose the appropriate template and create the integration for that. similarly hcm payroll there are payroll there are some of the adp check print template ADP tax filling monthly, ADP tax filling periodic, ADP tax filling quarterly, ADP tax filling COBRA. These are some of the payroll integrations will be have templates. Okay. Chronos, master tax filling monthly, master tax filling periodic. So we, these are different types of templates for payroll module. Okay. And this payroll module is this integration is used. When the payroll is run within the workday system, oh, yeah. so like we have different modules like HCM benefits, payroll, options management, okay, uh, time and uh, attendance. These are different modules under HCM. Some companies they do uh, implement implement uh, some of the modules alone. Okay, let's say 
uh, one customer have implemented HR benefits time and attendance in workday system, but to process payroll, they may dependent on people's of SAP or some other uh, uh, some other technology. Okay, it depends on their uh, okay. I see some of the uh, vendors who run payroll within workday. I see some of the vendors who uh, who work who dependent to process payroll for another company. Okay, let's say people saw that something. So you know, workday is payroll is implemented for only four countries: US, Canada, uh, UK, and France. So there are only four companies currently it is implemented payroll module for uh, payroll module in workday. So I have implemented a workday system for any EMEA clients, okay, EMEA or uh, Asian clients. So they they, they can they cannot uh, run payroll within the workday system because they it's not delivered yet by workday. They are still working uh, on processing the delivering the payroll module for all the countries, country wise. Okay, and they set up for four countries. For all other countries, they still have to depend on with third party system to process payroll for their employees. Okay. Uh, let's say uh, there is a company, Indian company who implemented Workday here. Okay. Uh, the Workday they can implement is maybe they implement for HCM uh, or HR or uh, uh, benefits module or time and attendance they can implement, but they cannot implement for payroll because it's not given by payroll is not, uh, that feature is not, the module is not even delivered by one day so we cannot implement payroll for indian any indian companies or any asian companies still now okay they, we can only implement hcm and benefits are other model okay so in this case these companies how they they will do is they depend on uh, third party system to payroll to process for payroll here yeah. okay. uh, for that um, if I want to send all employees data to third party payroll or third party system, again, they will have a template here. We call it as picky or pick off. So we can find these integrations here okay, under third party payroll. Uh, cloud connector for third party payroll. So that means, so we are depending, my customer is, my client is depending uh, payroll third party company for to process payroll for their employees. Okay, let's say these are the third party uh, ADB. If you want to third party ADB is processing ACP ADB is another company who process payroll for uh, uh, many of the companies. This is a number one uh, company who process payroll. This is a third company. Uh, if you want to send all our information, employee information data to ADB to process a payroll okay we can choose this template and create integration for them so it will be all data will be automatically sent to adp to process the payroll for them so it, it extracts all employees uh, total base pay amount uh, uh, their uh, okay their, their taxes their deductions that is configured in what way it will extract all information but it will send uh, feed data to adp okay ADP will process the payroll and uh, the salaries will be provided uh, to their accounts. Once the payroll is completed, the uh, employee salary will be credited to their accounts once the payroll is processed. Okay. So here we see different types of uh, templates here. Our payroll uh, North Gate Asia is the one of the vendor, which is Hong Kong. If they third party payroll for Hong Kong system or something, Asia. This is a vendor name, okay. ADP is one of the vendor names. Okay. Some of them are depreciated, that means no longer using. So, if you see in the bracket, depreciate, depreciated means like it's going to be removal or it's soon get removed. Remove. This template is soon get removed or depreciated. Okay. So, some of them are depreciated slides here, yeah. depreciated, depreciated. So, now you see in the bottom, like payroll effective change interface payroll interface so payroll interface we also call it as pick off pick off payroll effective change interface is called it's it's like more advanced interface that is we call it as picky here picky okay so these two type of integrations we build when we 
send data to third party system for processing payroll. That means when you are dependent to it, third party system to process with the payroll. Yeah. Be key and because these are the templates, many com other companies will use to send employee data. Okay, and that means employee uh, all information, including uh, based on benefits, uh, deductions, earnings, okay, uh, uh, so like uh, frequency, pay frequency, okay, annual pay, annual processing, annual uh, base benefit uh, amount, annual base benefit amount. So all this information, and along with credit, along with bank data, so bank account number, uh, bank details, okay, to provide, these are required information to process payroll, right? So once they process payroll, it should be created to bank, employee bank. So all these in these templates will contain all the fields related to um, process the payroll for the employees. Okay. So the, the older version of Workday, they more they mostly use payroll interface that is called PICOP. Okay. The newer one, so this P P payroll effective change interface. Okay. This template is re recently designed and done, given by Workday. Nowadays, if any employees or any the customers are implementing a payroll interface for third party system, they use this template, payroll effective change interface here. Okay. So likewise, we have benefits, we have uh, uh, templates for payroll, we have templates for third party payroll here. Uh, we have templates for HCM. Okay, let, let's say HCM, there are module there are different types of templates here so what you can you have to choose each template depends on the requirement here yeah. so let's see i want to choose um we have if these are hc module something which is related to all data related to HC, for HC. so uh, for factor worker talent profile inbound Core connector positions, core connectors, out, uh, organization outbound, locations. So we see LMS outbound, job requisitions, core connector job requisitions, core connector job family and profile. So we can see a lot of templates for HCM. This is belong to HCM here. E verify employment verification. So E verify is one of the uh, uh, company actually government organization where they used to verify the employment okay or employment of the um, uh, whether it is employee uh, they do background check they do, they do background check of the employee you verify is the vendor or company government organization okay. so if you want to do a, if you want to do any employees after hiring or after before hiring uh, we want to provide all candidate information to e verify to do a background check so we can build integration by using this template e verify so like connexa is one of the vendors who provides some kind of uh, okay i don't know what it is. this is this type of template like if you have any business with connexa can use these templates and we can build the integrations. These are under HCM module, so which are related to all HCM. Uh, social security number verification, Salesforce workforcing, say um, Talio. Talio is a vendor who, who provides uh, a recruitment module, mostly for uh, recruitment. Uh, to, to recruit the employees, they depend on Talio application here. So where, where new hires will be happen, recruitment and new hires will be happen in the Talio system. So, if any customer who is having business with Talio or for the recruitment module, okay, recruitment module, they will have build integrations with this from Talio to work day, work day to Talio. We have templates here. Okay. So, worker time block inbound. So, this, this, these are related to HCM module okay uh, so and this many of them are related to specific company or vendor so I suppose I want to send an integration uh, for ADP or uh, let's say Hartford I want to Hartford is a company who provides benefits I want to send the integration uh, to Hartford I want to send create an integration to Hartford 
which sends employee information to hardcore to provide some benefits okay, uh, for employee benefits i do not have a template for hard code what i can do so i cannot use any uh, other template which is created by adp or which is created by blue cross blue shield which is created by aetna okay which is created by metlife which is created by united healthcare okay these are vendor specific templates if i want to i don't let's say i don't have business with these vendors i have i am dependent with any other employer another any different vendor to process benefits my company okay my vendor list is not here so my customer is using one of the vendor okay so my vendor name is not listed here and there is no template for benefit template for this one my vendor okay like we see adp aetna these are the vendor names so my vendor is not listed here or worldly has not provided a template for my vendor in that case what we choose there is a template generic connector here called benefit connectors okay using these connectors we can create our own uh, integration to this uh, vendor which is not listed there so benefit connectors using benefit connectors we can create our own integration custom integration specific to any vendors okay specific to any vendor so we can create it here so if it is our vendor is listed there we can directly choose and uh, build the integration if vendor name our vendor name is not listed there or, uh, we can uh, create integration using benefit connectors so what is the difference between benefit connectors and the if you choose a vendor name okay let's say adp template or something so when you choose that one 99 for 95 percent of the work will be would then done by workday system that means what are the fields uh, we want to send like, like suppose i want to sell, send 100 fields to this uh, this vendor adp so what are the fields employee id if to date or something first name last name gender date of birth dependent details okay let's say um, um, payroll details so what are the fields like let's say 100 or 120 fields that fields what they will choose it what they will already choose it and what they will specify, choose the specific format like for employee ID it should be 10 characters for a uh, first name it should be 30 characters in all in uppercase or in lowercase or date format it should be something else uh, instead of yyy mmdd uh, they want to do it mmdd yyy so all these requirements so already predefined already predefined and already come with specific to vendor format specific to adp vendor format that is so that means that they already know that our adp will require this format or these fields these many fields and these these many formats and this is the output file name we want to send it's a dat file or it's a csv file or it's a pgp encrypted file so everything they will they will configure it and provide with us so that is the difference if you choose the benefit connectors we need to choose every manually choose every everything we need to work with the vendor okay the vendor will provide a template for us so what are the fields they need it and what are the um, file field format for each uh, each column let's say employee id what is the field format uh, how many letters it is it's a 10 characters length this is 15 character length uh, how, what the date formats what the file name uh, what is the file name extension uh, should be so everything uh, we need to gather the requirements from the vendor here so we need to work with the vendor we need to gather the requirements each and every requirement and we need to build our integration to fulfill that, that requirement so here we may need additional efforts so if you say specific to vendor if you choose a template specific to vendor let's say 90 percent of the work done the work day but if you choose the benefit connectors and 50 percent only uh, uh, template work they will provide the instruction other 50 percent efforts we need to build as a developer we need to put our efforts to build the integration because so the requirements the file format uh, uh, and everything we need to work with the vendor and create the integration whereas the other type of templates okay already is done by workday if there is any change Workday will maintain us. Workday will take care of that. 
uh, if you choose other type of temperature, ADP, COPA, ADP is SSA, ADP, ETL. So, if it is a benefit connector type of integration, benefit connector type of integration, you can see that um, if any change in the future, uh, we have to do that. Okay. I let's say I have developed an integration with the benefit connectors here. Where is that? I saw one benefit connector. So, if there is any change in the future, developer has to modify it. Whereas, in the when you choose a benefit connector type of integration, when you choose a name a template ADP or something, a work they will maintain that template and they will make the changes to that template. They will make the changes to that template. So most of the clients, uh, uh, they have a business with uh, any of these vendors. Already three different templates available end to end. So most of the vendors, uh, vendor name will be already listed here. Most of the companies. If it's a very small company, or they are not uh, doing business with these companies or uh, any other small companies they are doing, and the template is not available. What we can do? We need to choose a create an our integration using uh, benefit connectors template here. Okay. Similarly, HCM also, there are different types of templates available. Okay, if our requirement is not, template is not, our associated template is not available here, what we can do? We can create an integration using core connector worker template. Core connector worker. Let's see, this is a core connector worker here. With this template, we create, we build the integration from the scratch, from the beginning. Okay. So let's see. We go with the example here. One with core connector worker template by choosing the core connector worker template here. So I'm choosing a template called core connector worker. Click on OK. As soon as I click on OK, you see different services available here. So there are 24 integration services available. So we need to choose which service we need it here to create our integration. Okay, there are 24 services available here, integration services. So few of them are mandatory and few of them are optional here. Let's see the first one, first first to ten or something. These are mandatory services. So let's see. I can add, this is grayed out. I cannot make it an optional here. So it is enabled, enabled. So optional is grayed out. Okay. So these are, that means these are the mandatory services. We need an integration this template will contain. And if you go to in the bottom, there are services which is optional. Let's say optional, this one is check, optional is checkbox. So if you want to choose it, you can choose check, check it. If you don't want to choose this service, you can uncheck it. So in this template, core counter worker template, there are 24 integration services available. And from these services, 10 of them are mandatory one to create the integration. And with the remaining all the, the optional ones. So optional ones, we can choose it. Okay. Let's see what is this optional ones. Okay. Let's see. So these mandatory ones, if you see, uh, let's see the different ones. Uh, launch parameters integration maps integration configuration integration maps foundation will will be seeing in the, in the when building the integrations we need to configure all these steps these mandatory steps okay that's why uh, it's enabled here it's not an optional one when we are building the integration all these services we need to configure it so configure all these services launch parameters we need to configure integration maps we need to configure okay. uh, Okay, maps, integration maps we need to configure, eligibility we need to configure. Okay. So all these configurations, mandatory configuration is required uh, and they, these are not optional. 
So when we are building this integration, we will be configuring all these services manually. The optional ones, it is our uh, wish. If our requirement says this needs to be taken um, uh, selected, we can and uh, we, we need to select this. Otherwise, we can uh, ignore this one. Okay. So let's see what is optional service here. Delivery uh, core connector worker delivery service. This is used. Uh, this service is when you want to deliver the file to third party system. Okay. I have created integration. The integration will generate one output file. So that output file we want to deliver to some other system, third party system or downstream system. For to do the delivery, we need to enable this service. If you don't enable this service, you cannot deliver the document to third party system or outbound to outbound value to third party system here. Okay. We can see a document del delivery service here. Document delivery service. So if you want to do the document delivery, you can need to check this, otherwise uncheck it. Okay. Similarly, we have worker transaction log services. So worker transaction log service means we have different types of transactions. So okay. let, let's say hire is one of the transactions, terminate is one of the transactions, uh, promotion, demotion, salary high. These are employee level transactions. You want to include what type of transaction it is, what is the data change in the output file. Okay. What is the data in the output file? You can you you want to list down the what transaction type when it occurred. So who who has made the transaction? Again, what is the effective date of the transaction? Let's say hire is one of the transaction or termination is one of the transaction. So if you choose this service, we can see all the logs of the transactions. That means who initiated the transaction, uh, when it is get completed. Okay, which effective date it is completed? What is the transaction name? Whether it's a hire or terminate, all the details will be listed showed showed in the outbound file. If you choose it, it will come with that. All this data will be come in the output file here. If you choose transaction log service here. Similarly, uh, we have a worker file name sequence generator. Sequence generator is the, is the place where we do define the file name and sequence number to that file name. Like, let's say I have an output file in this country, this integration will generate one output file. The output file usually contains some some name, dot txt, dot csv, or dot text file or something. So if you want to append a number for every output file, let's say when I run the integration at first time, uh, output file contains number one at the end. So second time I run the integration, number two will be appended. Uh, third time I run the integration, the output file name contains number three there, okay, at the end. So if you want to append a sequence number to the file name, one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that, when, whenever, how many times it will run, a number will get incremented based on, to the output file name. So based on that, we can come to know this is which file name, how, how many times the integration run, and the, the output file name, we can easily identify. Sometimes they need, uh, vendors need a sequence number in the output file. In that case, we choose uh, file sequence generator here, worker file sequence generator service here. So everything is here, core connectors is just a configuration. Configuration. So if the, for now, it's not coding is not required here in the core connectors, it's just a configuration. So coding is required in document transformation type of thing. So all core connectors are just a configuration here. Okay. And let's see. I have con I want to choose I want to send a file output file to third party system. I have enabled this service. I want to see what type of transaction it's whether it's a hire, whether it's a terminate, or whether it's a promotion or demotion. I will choose this service. If it's a file name, I want to choose a sequence generator in the file name. I want to choose this service. Okay. Now there are a few more services. Let's see CSV options. This means if the file is CSV file and we need some options, uh, CSV file options, we need enable the service. Otherwise, we don't need. Uh, and integration retention document retention policy. So this is to define how many 
days the output full file should remain in the system work the system so if you choose the service document uh, retention service integration document retention we have the options to provide the number of days the output file should remain in the system so after the let's say i have 30 days i provided i want the output file generated by this integration will remain exist in this integration up to 30 days we can download it or we can view it after 30 days it automatically get deleted so document retention is nothing but the number of days we need to retain the output file the number of days we want to retain the output file we want to choose that we can choose this service otherwise we don't know so if you want to get the worker photo in the output file we need to choose worker profile photo section so if you don't want to send the worker photo in the output file we don't need to choose similarly we have different services here personal data sections the uh, worker data worker status data uh, section position data section contract data section okay i want all employee employee personal data in my output file in that case what i do i choose this one uh, in case i want to see all employees status data section status information employee status what is the status uh, status data contains high date termination date what is the current status of the employee, whether it's terminated or whether it's on leave or is uh, retired. So all employee status data fields will be available under, under this section. All personal data section fields will be available under this section. All status data fields will be available under this section. All position data related information or fields will be available in this section. So all contract information data will be available in this section. So we need to choose which sections of data you want to print in the output file yeah, okay i want to print personal information i can choose this one i want to choose i want to bring status information in my output file i want to choose this to uh, enable this option okay similarly i want to bring our position information in my output file i can choose this option similarly i want to i don't want to contract the data in my output file okay i can uncheck this one similar leave of absence data i want to see leave of absence data when the employee went to leave or what type of leave it is it's a uh, it's a maternity leave or it's a short-term disability leave or it's a long-term disability leave or it's a casual leave or it's a paid leave there are different types of leave leave, leave types are available if you choose this service so when all the employees leave off in options information available in the output file all the fields or columns related to leave of options will be in the output file there okay similarly worker compensation data if you want to bring the worker compensation in the output file compensation includes employees total base pay amount uh, total base pay amount and salary frequency okay. um, frequency is nothing but it's monthly payroll or weekly payroll okay it's a bi-weekly payroll or something and so how is hourly paid or it's a salary what is the type of the uh, employee whether it's a hourly employee or it's a salaried employee some employees may be paid hourly some employees are salaried employees that means uh, they will not paid get paid for them they will have a regular salary uh, for on a weekly on a uh, monthly wise uh, the constant salary they will get it salaried employees almost all the employees will get a constant as they will be uh, pay cycle but hourly employees how many hours they work based on the hours they will be calculated and salary will be provided for them. okay so in the compensation details it can contain all this information you know, total employee salary or type frequency uh, that information in the output file we will choose this section and the next one is different identification data section that means employee social security number employee driver's license these are government identification data uh, okay driver's license security social security number or some any other uh, license identification data um, if you want to send in the output file that data belongs to this section if you choose this it will automatically coming in the output file otherwise it will not there so 
So we need to choose multiple services here. Information data, related personal data, worker qualification data. So uh, then this includes worker qualification, like when, what are the education qualifications, what is the experience. So all those information in the worker qualification data section will be there. Then, similarly, worker transaction log data section. Okay. So worker transaction log data section contains uh, what type of transaction is the highest termination, terminate, okay. Uh, that would be what it will show you. So, there are different services we need to choose it among 24 uh, given by this template or four control worker. So, I choose few of them are mandatory. If you see here, all are grayed out. I cannot choose uncheck them, those are mandatory ones. So, the other ones I, I enable them based on my requirement. Okay, this is the service to get it. Okay. Let's see. Click on OK. One more. I'm clicking on OK. I selected these options. I click on OK. So it's showing one error message. Let's see what's the difference. So there are attribute integration attribute enabled for this system for this integration system that marked as required for launch, but do not have a value assigned to them. Okay, there is a field that is required for launch, but it is there is no value assigned to them. So that is what this integration system throwing an error message here. Okay, so this error will automatically comes when you choose these services. When you are choosing these services and click on OK, it will automatically come. What we need to do? We need to to re resolve this error. We need to go to actions integration system configure integration attributes so in the attributes there is a mandate required one field called required for launch so version and required for launch okay so this is we need to there is no value for that we need to provide a value here click on plus button we will see uh, in the bottom different versions will be there that means we need to select core connector version name here okay will be different having different versions here version number the latest version we need to choose four counter 25 so the version name is 25 uh, the latest version i choose it now i click that okay here so this is required for launch that was the error message showing. now the error message is gone it's showing two alerts we can ignore the alerts so alerts is not not, that means no need to fix it. If it is error, we need to fix it immediately. So now I have configured the services alone. Whatever the among uh, among 24, okay. Now it's showing 18. Few of them are and I I didn't uncheck it. So among 24 earlier, it was showing 18. Now. That means the whichever I enable, don't enable, or I didn't select it. That will not come in here. Okay. So this means. Let's see, these are the optional services I configured. So optional is yes, I configured yes, enabled yes. Optional is yes, I enabled yes. These are the services I, I choose so far here. Till now I choose this many services. Once we choose these services, the next step is we need to go for a different configuration here. Go to actions, integration system, configure integration attributes. So it's everything is configuration here in the code managers. We need to configure different services and build the integration. Here we see just now we configure the version name and there are few more fields. We they, these are not optional fields we can configure. Let's say output file name, output document. Okay, these are the other fields we want to configure it. Okay, we want to provide some, some default output file name. We can choose it. Okay. What is output file name for this integration? Okay, and also we can specific to environments. If it is a production instance, this is my output file name. If it is a sandbox instance, this is output file name. If it is implementation, this is output file name. Tenant wise, we can also provide the output file names here. Let's say, uh, let's say output. What is output file name for this one? Is like you know, I will select WD. Okay, search. RD17 
four tank. So RD seventeen core character worker dot XML is my output file. So this is for all instances. Uh, if I don't select any restricted environment here, that will be applicable for all instances. If I want a specific instance for only production, let's say if it is a production, this is my output file name. And if it is a uh, implementation or something, I want to choose a different output file name. Let's say test underscore. RD17 core character worker data is my output file name when it is run this integration in the sandbox or implementation. What is a sandbox? When I run this integration in the sandbox or implementation, my output file name will be generated with text underscore RD17 core character worker data XML. If I run the same integration in production instance, my output file name will be generated with this name. So in this likewise, you can do configure here. output file name, output file tags. So we we'll tags we we'll talk about later uh, when we are to choosing document transformation. So these tags will be useful when we are come how to combine two integrations here for one document transformation uh, and a core connector. Most of the times, core connector is not uh, will be kind of combining two integrations here so core connector will be combined with document transformation to generate the final output okay. so when you are working with document transformation this file tags will be useful when uh, identifying the data so identifying the output file names core connector output file what is the core connector output file and uh, to that we will provide some tags here let's say this is the file name We'll be assigning some tags here. Okay, let's assign now itself. Okay, assigning a tab means like create one tag. If it's already exist, we can choose. Otherwise, you can create some tag. Here. Let's say RD17 RD17 core character. So I've given one tag here. Okay. That means this output file, this output file will be tagged to this name. This output file of this will be tagged to this name. This name. So wherever you instead of directly reference the output file name, will reference with the tag. So sometimes wherever I want to see the output file name reference, I don't need to provide the complete file name. Instead, I reference with the tags here. That is what. We, so we need to reference the tags in the integration uh, document transformation. So that's why we provide tags here. So for now, I just created one tag and assigned uh, to here. So the, that's it. We talk about these tags in the later. Okay. What's the name I choose? Format is by default it's an XML format. Core character by default will give you an XML format. Okay, if you want to generate a file into a different output, CSV or uh, CSV output or uh, something else, uh, text output, we need to create another integration system that is called document transformation. We need to combine these two integrations, four characters and document transformation, to create it to bring a final output file. That's a test file or CSV file. Uh, we want to create another integration system. So for that system, this XML is going to be input for that system. Okay. That's why we choose these tags here. So we are providing a core connector output file to a document transformation as an input file. Okay. So this out core connector output file is going to be input file to document transformation. So that's why you choose the tags here. So we need to define the tags in the document transformation. Based on that, it will identify which is the output file, core connector output file. And it will take that core connector output file and it has an XSLT transformation. XSLT transformation we need to apply there. So where it will take this output, XML output and transform and send the, create another file, text file or CSV file. So by default, 
foreground worker is XML output. It will generate. That's what it is shown here. There are a few more attributes you can define here. Include indicative workers in the full full file. That means inactive. Include inactive workers in the full file. That means when we are generating a full file, we are generating a full file. We want to include inactive workers. Some some of the workers may be terminated. They are inactive. So you want to include them or not? It's an option here. You want to include them? You can choose yes or no here. There should be checkbox. If it is checked, it's yes. If it's unchecked, it is no. Okay, that's what. We want. So it's not a mandatory one. It's an issue. So everything is optional. The only thing mandatory one is version name. That's what it was throwing error when we are. As soon as we configured integration services, it throws an error message. And we came here and defined the version. The error message is gone. Okay. So all other services, including file names, including file names, are also optional here. Okay. There is another place where uh, sequence generator, sequence generator, where we define the file name along with the sequence number, dates, and everything. Okay. If you don't define there, it will take. If it if you define file name in the sequence generator. Uh, the integration will take the file name available in the sequence generator by default. So in this place, even it is optional here. In this place, the file output file name also optional here. Okay. So let's see. There are other attributes here. Name type. Okay. What are what name type you want to include in the output file? Whether it's a, a private prefer name. Okay. By default, it's a prefer name. Okay. If you want to change. Uh, legal name, legal preferred name types here. By default, it's a uh, legal name. If you want to choose a different name type, you can choose it here. Let's say I have different types of names here. Okay, formal name, legal name, preferred name. Okay, by default, it's a preferred name, legal name. Sorry, if you want to choose other type, you can choose it. If you don't choose anything, by default, it will take. Uh, legal name as a preferred name. So likewise, we have different country code type. Okay. What what country code code type you want to prefer? It's a two-digit number. Alpha two-digit is nothing but a two-digit uh, code here. Okay. If it's United States, it will show US. Okay. If it's United Kingdom, it will show UK. It's a two-digit number. Country code it will show. Here. If it's India, it says IN or something. There are something if you want three digit code, you can choose it. Let's say if my country code I want to choose it as uh, three digit alpha code. IS code three one double six one alpha three code. That means three letters it will give. Instead of US, it will give you USA. Okay. Similarly, if it is uh, India, it shows IND. Okay, like three digit number it will give. By default, it's a two digit. If you don't select, it will take two digit. So, so these are some of the types, address type, whatever. By default, it's a work. If you want to home or home address, you can choose it. You can check this box, enable this one. Uses, uh, address usage, uh, private address, phone numbers. What type of phone number you want to include in the output file? It's a work phone number, it's a home phone number, it's a mobile phone number. So we choose this. And enable the service. Let's see if I click on choose it. My uh, email type is showing optional. It will give what type of email you want to choose. It's a business email, home email, local email, work email. You can choose it. Okay. Include private email addresses. It will include all other private email addresses as well in the output file. Okay, include peer values. Include peer values when it's selected. Uh, it will be uh, useful when it's a change detection. Okay, prior values is nothing but let's say I have changed my phone number as of today. Uh, it was from uh, some phone number to different phone number. I change it. Include prior values means it will include what is my prior phone number and as well as what is my current phone number when I get changed. So prior value is nothing but what is the previous value and the, what is the current value. It's a phone number change, it will give previous phone number and it will give current phone number. It's an address change, it will give previous address and current address. So anything, yeah, any any change, if it is 
uh, marital status change what is a prior marital status and what is the current marital status likewise for any field if there is a change uh, it will include both prior value as well as current value and output here okay. so that is what include prior values so you select checkbox is yes it will be included prior values in the output file okay. so job classification group job classification organization type of organization these are like what is this description it will show here if it is required we can select from this from the click on plus box and check check it okay some of the identification type of identities. what type of identification data you want to fill it let's say i want there are different types of identifications social security number government license passport visa so these are national so which identification type you want to include in the output file you can choose it uh, in this section these are the attributes you are configuring it so some of them are many of everything is optional you need to go one by one and select whether it's needed it what uh, or what type of data you want to show in the output file based on that you can configure it okay. so i'm skipping all of this for now it's hard at the time only okay finally you see when i select a service called document retention policy okay so by default it's a 30 days 30 days our file output file remain in our system after 30 days it will get automatically deleted so if you want to extend this you can choose this button and extend the days up to 180 the maximum is 180 we can extend extend output file to remain in the workday uh, uh, 180 days that means up to 180 days you can download the file from the workday system after 180 days it will be automatically deleted okay we have dates for one to max minimum one to max 180 we can choose the dates here okay. suppose i want to see three months i want to show the output file available in the system for three months then i can show 90 days here okay this is the attribute service we configure now click on okay so for now we just configure for this integration we configure integration services here so among 24 I have configured among 18 okay similarly out of uh, once I configure these services I configure the attributes by clicking on actions integration system configure integration attributes okay now we see we configure field attributes next step is configure field attributes I click on this different services I selected here okay let's see in the first place first to configuration I choose the services right personal data section status data section position data section leave of options data section compensation data section transaction log data section these are the services I choose there so let's say so each section contains fields from different fields here okay let's see i have uh, fields for uh, personal data section what are the fields available first name last name okay let's see i want to see first name in my output file okay i need to choose name data first name i want to print last name in my output file these are belongs personal data fields here i want to print last name in my output file so i want to choose check the last name here okay similarly in different uh, name related fields are there name related fields these are name data fields middle name la local script these are op optional if you don't want to print them you can uncheck this option so this include include in the output that means this field will be, whatever we checked here it will be all the fields will be included in my output file here okay let's see gender i want to film birth date i want to show in my output file Country of birth I want to show in my output file, I can choose it. Region of birth, city of birth, marital status. These two I don't want to print on my output file, I can uncheck this option. This tag include in output. This section, whatever we selected, those fields will be included in my automatically included in my output file here. Yeah. Okay. A region, religion, disabled. 
municipality ethnicity okay i want to show nationality okay military service status address data section if you want to show print the address no uh, employee address in my output file you can print it okay so it's address type what type of address it is address usage is it's a public or private address you can choose okay is a primary address you can choose line number municipality uh, sub municipality region okay and uh, postal code country so we can related we can bring what are the fields related to personal data here it includes employee personal data address email address phone numbers all those are the employee personal data we can include as once you printed address we can go with the phone numbers what type of phone number you want to choose so in the output file you can choose it here okay. then email address data you want to show so email data is primary and email data address i want to choose it i choose it here so these are the employee personal data sections okay. that's it i choose some of the fields from personal data and this means include in output means where whichever is selected those will be included in the output file okay so some of the fields if you want to require field if you made it required that means it should be having some value if it don't doesn't have any value it will throw an error message in the output file some of them are required you can choose required here first name last name a uh, gender let's say gender is a required field or a marital status is a required field you can choose it gender is required if there is no gender in the data for any employee this kind of error message saying that gender is required and it is not included in the output file okay so it is a want to make it a required mandatory fields you can choose in this option and also maximum length let's say for first name i want to maximum make it maximum length of 30 characters last name i want to maximum length of 30 characters i can choose this option here so if it is exceeded more than 30 when a first name is exceeded more than 30 it will give it will print up to 30 characters after that it will be trimmed okay any any letters after 30 it will be trimmed here only 30 characters will show in the output file likewise if you want to provide maximum length you can provide each every field here if you want to make it required you can make any every field required here whatever you choose likewise you choose it now i selected fields from personal data section now go to status data so status data section what are the fields is there we have a high date i want to show high date in my output file i can choose it I want to show whether employee status active or inactive or uh, this is uh, terminated so it will show employee status there okay high date mm. uh, and different dates here service date retirement date retirement continuous service date there are different dates are there if employee is terminated what is the termination date i want to include so these are different fields in the status data section we can include in the whatever they need in the output file we can include there let's say probation date i want to probation start date probation date i want to include i can include that. this is employee status data section i choose some of the fields here if you mark them anything required you can choose it if you want to provide length you can provide the length here if you don't want to provide any length here means all characters will be so if it is 100 characters all 100 characters will be printed in the output file if you if you don't it will limit the data here if you don't mention any max length it will complete will, uh, data will be printed in the output file okay so now we see status data next next i go to position data here in this section so these sections i defined in the uh, first step first place out of 24 i selected a few of the optional steps right so these optional steps are will show here and we need to fill data for each step here okay. now it shows position data in the position data we can see position title position id position title business title okay we'll get it worker type okay similarly some of the fields will be available related to position data i'm choosing some of the fields here 
supervisor id i want to i want to print supervisor id and supervisor name in my output file i can choose this supervisor id supervisor name. so there are other additional fields are there if you want to bring them in the output file we need to everyone one by one one by one we need to check it for now i just need our two fields here uh, supervisor id supervisor name and position title or business title i choose a few here and i'm going to next step here next service and a leave of options data also i have different uh, sections here okay first day of the work first day of the leave leave start date leave estimated leave end date whether it's on leave or not we can choose some fields in the leave of options data whichever you want to show in the output file okay it's compensation data also we will have total base pay amount total base pay currency total base pay frequency okay all these fields will be there frequency is nothing but it's monthly semi monthly okay weekly payroll or something currency which currency the employee belongs to uh, total base pay what is the total annual base pay amount here total annual base pay amount here so let, let's see some some of the fields and com compensation i choose here and transaction log services so what type of transaction here transaction log description whether it's a hire whether it's a terminate whether it's a promotion demotion it will show there transaction effective moment entry moment effective moment is nothing but when it is going to be effective when is the hire is going to effective when the termination is going to effective so that is the effective date and the entry date is nothing but when we enter this transaction into our day system so that's type okay transaction log type is recent or is corrected if you want to choose that if you we can select these options here and that okay so these are the services and field names i selected which are the fields i want to show in the output file we can bring it here okay. now let's see we we done three configurations here one is let me open the integration again so if you want to see the integration system int sos i mentioned int 17 or uh, sorry int 16 here for connector worker int sos rt16 rt16 for connector worker this is my integration i configured three services there one is integration services configure integration services configure integration attributes configure integration field overrides these services i configured it okay for now so there are a few more things we need to configure it okay in tomorrow's class we do configure all other services here and uh, we build the integration so so for core contents there is no coding so everything is configurations here okay whatever we do we do configure and generate the output file in xml format so we do um, we will do other configurations by tomorrow's class and we run the coconut type of integration we run the integration and see the output so let me know if you have any questions or else we can have a tomorrow class again at same time Hi, Parvati and Rohini, are you there? Uh, do you have any questions? Hi, uh, are you able to hear me? Hello. Rohini, are you able to hear me? Hello? Yeah, yes, I can hear you now. Yes. You no, know, I don't have any questions. 
Okay, fine. So we'll see. We'll talk tomorrow again. Uh, we'll okay, plan beer and we run the coordinator in. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, bro.